This is Ahmad Rashad back at the Superstars competition. Now, some people have the right idea. Maybe they should put windsurfing in as one of the events. Anyhow, back to the track. The runners are getting ready for the 100-yard dash, and the favorite has to be this man, Ron Brown. Ron is an Olympic gold medalist. He's also a wide receiver and a kick returner for the Los Angeles Rams. He gives him that key ingredient that all NFL teams need, raw speed. His speed puts fear into every defensive team in the National Football League. And his speed was also proven recently as he won the NFL's fastest man competition. Ron Brown has made a successful transition from sprinter to football player and the upcoming Olympics in Seoul are still in his plans. Uh, it's gonna be good. Uh, ben Johnson will be tough to beat. Uh, Carl Lewis will be another athlete that'll be tough to beat. And then there'll be somebody else coming out of the woodworks that'll be uh, shocking to the track and field world. And I may be there. I may have a chance to get back in. Are you training for it now? Yeah, I've been training for it. Now, you're training for the Olympics. The Rams are trying to go to the Super Bowl. How do they feel about it? I'm not sure exactly how they would do it, and uh, depending on how things go, uh, I'll make my decision whether or not I'm going to try Seoul or not. So Ron Brown could be a force in the upcoming Seoul Olympics. That'll be seen right here on NBC, but right now, it's the 100-yard dash, Don. Yes, it is, about The ninth event coming up in lane one, the once and future Olympian, perhaps, Ron Brown. Lane two, Cornelius Bennett. Lane three, a man who distinguished himself a short time ago on the half-mile run. This is his specialty, sprinter Herschel Walker of the Cowboys. And in lane four, another fast NFLer, Gary Anderson. A lot of pressure here on Ron Brown, being the NFL's fastest man. I'm sure Herschel Walker will have something to say about it. Now the guy's going to give him the pressure is Cornelius Bennett. <laughs> Was he going to put him in a headlock before they start running or something? Get a little linebacker. He just got in there because there's only four guys in the 100. I'll tell you one thing. This linebacker can move it out, though. <laughs> no, he can. He can fly. As we'll see. Uh, he'll have to be careful about them afterburners here in this race. I don't care how <laughs> fast he is. He's not in this class. He's doing all right, though, but on the inside lane, Ron Brown it looks like he's going to take it to the tape first. Herschel Walker coming out hard, but it's Ron Brown, Herschel Walker, Gary Anderson, and Cornelius Bennett. The start is key in a race of this nature. Ron Brown's a master of the fast start, so is Herschel Walker. And Gary Anderson knows how to time that gun. He's a very good starter, former high school sprinter. Anderson actually gets away first here in the nearest lane. Well, Cornelius Bennett was in the race for about three steps, and then all of a sudden, the world-class speed started to show up. These are legitimate sprinters here, We're talking about Herschel Walker and Ron Brown. Ronnie, congratulations. What about the wind? Oh, the wind is tough. It's a headwind, and it's hard to get through it until you start running, changing your form. I just thank God I was able to get through it. Let me just tell you about the headwind, 977. Seven. Oh, wow. It's not bad for a headwind. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote it all to my little sister. She encouraged me. He goes, you came here to compete, compete. Just do your best. Did you hear Herschel? No. What, what happened? I was just, could you hear him coming down the track? Oh, yeah. I could see him. <laughs> <laughs> I could see him. He's a, he's a great competitor. He's done a lot. You know, it's amazing he can do everything he's done today and then still run the 100. He's strong. I gotta get in shape. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to get in shape. He's in pretty good shape. He wins the 100, does Ron Brown, followed by Walker, Anderson, and Bennett. And one event to go. Herschel Walker's back into the lead with 44 points, followed by Nehemiah, Craig, Foster, Noonan tied at 20. Up next, the toughest of all, the obstacle course. Welcome back to the Superstars. This is Don Cricky. as now we come to the final test and the most difficult, the obstacle course. A test of speed, strength, agility, and jumping ability. The five finishers who finished highest overall will advance to the Superstars finals. And right now, coming to this event, the top five are Herschel Walker, number one, with 44 points. Ronaldo Nehemiah is second with 37 points. Roger Craig has 35. Two athletes are tied with 20, Greg Foster and Danny Noonan. First thing you look at is that 12-foot wall. You get over the wall, you drop 12 feet, then you go through the tunnel, hit the blocking sled, go through the tires, and then the easy part of the race continues. That's right. You jump over the water jump, you leap over the high jump bar, you negotiate the last two hurdles, and you're done. It's very easy. 
Well, maybe not that easy. <laughs> For us to say. That's right. Running in the first tee, and currently in third place, there's Roger Craig. Running in lane two, currently in second place, a four-time Superstars champion, Ronaldo Nehemiah, who is excellent in this event. This is something that uh, you can't really practice. There's not many athletes here that have an obstacle course in their backyard. No. <laughs> or would want one. Whoa! Oh. Ronaldo had a problem on the wall as Roger is over first, and Roger Craig with a substantial lead over one of the best obstacle course runners in the history of the superstars. It looked like Ronaldo just didn't have any strength in his legs to jump up on the wall. Well, I'm, I'm taking a look at Roger Craig, and he has strength in his legs, pumping through those tires and then over. Ronaldo just got a five-second penalty, knocking down the high bar, so Roger Craig comes in with a good time of 25.24, and with a five-second assessment against Ronaldo Nehemiah, as you see the penalty there. Here's another shot of him not going over the, over the high jump bar. I think his legs were a little dead. So he came in at 31.11. Not a happy development for a four-time champion. Now we come to the next heat. The current leader, Herschel Walker, is ready to take on the wall and the course. And running in lane two, the new Philadelphia Philly, just in from the Baltimore Orioles outfielder, Mike Young. Herschel Walker really controls this course. Uh, he is so good in the obstacle course. And I think his best part of it is getting over the wall. We'll see. Mike Young doing all right. If that's his best part, he's in deep trouble right now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have said that. It's only going to happen as soon as you say it. I tell you, Herschel put a hurt on that sled, though. He did. No penalties. Yep. Mike Young just got a five-second penalty. And look at Herschel Walker streak to the line. A perfect run without penalties or points. What did I say? His best part of the race is at the end. Herschel, it looked like you had a little bit of problem with the wall. Mike beat you over the wall, but then you made up for it once you started running. Yeah, I wanted to be safe. You know, what happened is uh, Ronaldo slipped on the wall, and I didn't want to do that. So I sort of tried to play it safe a little bit. Nice and safe, no penalties, and a nice, easy run. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Very nicely done by Herschel Walker as he's looking to defend successfully the Superstars title that he won a year ago. Now running in the next heat. Currently in a tie for fifth, Greg Foster. And running, and running against him in lane two will be the L.A. Rams receiver and kick returner, Ron Brown. Foster, a very experienced obstacle course man. Hitting that wall and getting up and over is a key to having a good time, and Foster does it very nicely. Ron Brown spent a little time on the top of the wall. <laughs> you can always tell these track athletes they have a little trouble hitting that sled. It's so important to get through the course without making the penalty mistake. Five seconds is a lot of time, and that just cost Ron Brown in red five seconds. And Greg Foster sprints home very nicely over the hurdles with a time of 27.09. Ron Brown disappointed in his time of 32.55. But Foster's time means that Hersha Walker can do no worse than fourth in the obstacle course. And that's going to be good enough to give him the overall victory. One heat to go. Here's Cornelius Bennett, ready to run the obstacle course for the first time. And in lane two, Gary Anderson. See, this is what Cornelius has to get over the wall. He's got, oh, look at the strength in his arms, Ahmad. Gary Anderson with a good lead. Very agile going through the tires and now up over the high bar. First the water jump, no penalty points. That's what catches most of them for five seconds. It got Cornelius Bennett. You know, look at the strength in his arms now, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking 38 seconds worth of strength. <laughs> Gary Anderson did well, though. His time of 24.78 is good for first place in the optical course. And here then is the final order. Anderson, number one, Greg, two, Walker, three, Foster, and Nehemiah in the obstacle course run. And then the final overall standings in this preliminary round, Herschel Walker with 48 points leads the way onto the finals, followed by Craig, Nehemiah, Anderson, and Foster. 
Yeah. And Herschel Walker has caught his breath, and he's standing by with Paul McGuire now. Paul? All right, Herschel, congratulations winning the preliminaries. Well, thank you. Uh, I tell you, it was tough. Uh, there was a lot of competition. You know, the guys really went out and competed very well. And I tell you what, it's going to be tough in the finals because there's going to be 10 guys there, and I tell you, all 10 has got a very good opportunity of winning it all. One guy that, that you think that's really going to be tough? Well, it'll be hard to pick out one guy. I can pick out, you know, maybe two guys that I think is going to make it very tough. That'll be Ronaldo. You know, he's a defending champion. He's won it every year that he's competing in this. And Greg Foster had a very good showing. And I think you have to give Tim Brown. You know, Tim Brown came in here. This is his first time mm -hmm. in this event. He'd never done this before. And he went out and he fared very well. And he showed everyone he can compete with the best of them. Herschel, is there a difference mentally between the preliminaries, getting ready for preliminaries, and getting ready for the finals? Uh, yes, that's going to be a different because uh, right now you're going to have the 10 best. You know, before you may have had some guys that was really not sure of themselves, you know, in the preliminary. Right now you got the 10 best. So it's going to make it tough. And, uh, you know, you got to be ready. You know, you can't come in here with uh, uh, second guessing yourself. One final thing. I talked to Reggie White. Reggie said in his Muhammad Ali voice, He's going to win the final. I tell you what, Reggie has shown people, I think, today, and I think he's shown people all over that he is one fine athlete. You know, you've seen a lot of big guys come up and shy away from this wall. Reggie went over this wall, and I think he's shown people he's one of the best athletes in the NFL. Well, he's only 295. It's easy for him. That's true, and it's a little bit easy for him, I think. See, I, I don't think you have to go over the wall. He hit it and make it come down a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Herschel. Good luck, man. Thank you. We'll be back with more of the superstars after this. This is Don Crickey back at Miami Beach where we have now decided the 10 athletes who will compete next Sunday for the title of Superstar 1988. Tim Brown, the Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame, competing for the first time, makes it to the finals of the Superstars. And so does the man who caught two touchdown passes for the Redskins last January, Ricky Sanders, in that Super Bowl win. Danny Harris, a former Olympic silver medalist, makes it to the final round. And so does Jim Kelly, the Buffalo quarterback, get there for the first time. Reggie White, who set a record in weightlifting, advances the big Philadelphia Eagle in the finals. As is the defending Superstars champion, Herschel Walker of the Cowboys. A perennial Superstar standout, Roger Craig, is in the finals again. And so is four-time champion, Ronaldo Nehemiah. Gary Anderson of the San Diego Chargers has again advanced to the Superstars finals. Along with the great hurdler, Greg Foster, who's in the finals again. Ten standout athletes ready to compete next Sunday here on NBC Sports World for the title Superstar 1988. And again, I'm out. It looks like Herschel might be the man to beat, as he was last year. You know, Don, we've watched Herschel for the last couple of years, and he never sees his amazement. He's so smooth and so graceful. And I tell you one thing, as far as pride goes, he wants to repeat as Superstar's champion. Paul? You know, you and I talked about, before this thing started, you wanted to see the matchup between Ronaldo Nehemiah and Herschel Walker. I talked to Ronaldo after the fifth event, bowling. He said, everybody's picking Herschel Walker, defending champion. He's, I've won this thing four times. Looked straight at the camera and said, I'm going to win it for the fifth time. I remember John Elway doing that before the Super Bowl. Well, next Sunday we're going to find out. Now for Ahmad Rashad, Paul McGuire, and Bob Golick, this is Don Crickey. Tune in next Sunday on NBC Sports World for the finals of the Superstars 1988. Now let's go to Gail Gardner at our studio in New York.